Hello, let's bring you back. I think this is going to be part four of the fretless, headless base build. Um, keep looking at it for reference. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do anything on it now. I intended to uh, carry on today, uh, but uh, life gets in the way of life, as uh, Dave says in his world of fun stuff. So, sewer. So, this morning, I thought I need to take the escort, get it out of the garden, put it in my carport because tomorrow the escort is going for its MOT, which is just along the road from where I work. Um, so, I figured if I get the escort out today, put it in the carport, put one of the other mini cars in front of the escort so no one can nick it. Then in the morning, I've just got to move one car, get the Escort. So I did that, uh, sorted. The car I put in front of it was one of the cars I checked the oil on today. It looked a little bit low, but it wasn't in the end. It's because I dipped it while it was cold after just cranking it and moving it 10 foot. So it looked a bit low. So then I thought, oh, I haven't got any oil. I'll just pop up and get a little little top up bottle a, a liter or whatever and then I went to the car shop and a liter bottle was 10 pound and a, tw a five liter can was 18 pound on special offer so I thought well, I might as well do an oil change on it because I changed my oil twice a year on all my vehicles regardless of mileage uh, what I do is once a year uh, this has got nothing to do with the base whatsoever. <laughs> Once a year, I do a full service on all the vehicles, all the filters, plugs if they're petrol, fuel filters, everything. And then uh, six months later, I just do an oil change, no filters, anything, and I use my vacuum oil pump. So, it was so cheap, and I thought, well, it's actually eight, nine, eight months since I changed the oil, so I changed the oil on that one, stop ranting on Springy, this is getting boring, finish that, then thought I'll come and do a bit on the guitar, and then I was chatting with Gary next door, and we were looking at the big fridge freezer that he's got, sat in his outside, and discussing how we're going to get it in my van, and take it up to the skip, and it was sitting on top of the sewer man hole cover and then we decided that it might need looking at so we took the manhole cover off and lo and behold it was blocked so i did my once yearly drain rodding and uh, we got all that clear so everything's flowing again properly and then spent about an hour cleaning up all the horribleness and bleaching everything so that was that um now I've come to the carriage and it's three o'clock in the afternoon um, and I'm just looking at the guitar to see where to go with it. I think I've worked out a way to do the wiring without drilling an extra hole in the back end, I think. Um, so I'll show you how I think I'm going to achieve that. Still not 100% not perfect. But uh, we can have a look at that now. And I'll just chop off, chop off my dowel. It's had 24 hours. Uh, cut that flush and give it a quick sand and see if I've actually managed to achieve a decent uh, cover up or or what. And then we'll look at this wiring business. Well, I nearly got it lined up, and there's, for some reason, the bit around the edge has gone dark, but I think it'll have to do. And now it's raining. Okay, uh, this is what I'm trying to achieve. I've got my hole already there, from that pickup to that pickup. I've got a hole from this pickup 
to what used to be the cavity just comes out in fact uh, that's giddy that's where it comes out that hole but I need to get the this is the hole I've drilled in already this represents that that in there so I need to be able to connect the wiring from that pickup through there that pickup four wires coming through and connect them to these and another wire off the earth to the back of the bridge so I think move that I think um, I'm going to drill this a bit bigger from the side just to give me somewhere for spare wire to live and I think here on this top I'm going to drill a drill a hole out um, and then I'm going to have to try with a hole in there to drill another hole through to here or to here, preferably to there. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough angle to get through there to drill into here because this is already lower. That drops down. So I was going to drill through the end straight through there which means I could pull all the wires through pull them up from this hole connect them, push them back down, this hole will have to still be deeper uh, but that means there's a hole in the end which I'll have to plug but if I carve a big hole in here which is fine because it's under the bridge as long as I avoid these screws if I carve a big hole in here as my sort of cavity for putting the wiring in and pulling it through I've still got to put a hole through preferably to there it could probably go straight through to there but then I've got four wires underneath the pickup sponge which shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem let's uh, find some oh no that's a bridge pickups Tell the pickups because everything's stuck to them. The magnets. Now they're on the floor. Alright, that's the neck pickup. Oh god. That's the little wire for the earth. Right, two ticks. I'm just going to feed that wire through there and put the other pick up and see what happens. Yeah, I think I need it to come to this corner because this, what it, what we've got on the pickups, the bit of sponge, which is, is, is so that you can adjust the height of the pickup. The bit of sponge is just a shock absorber. It's uh, just in the middle. So the wires can go around the edges, so the wires don't actually go into the sponge at all. So really, ideally, I need to be able to get to this corner. Uh, whether I drill from this end, or if I put a hole in here, and mm, it's going to be a lot easier to drill from the end straight through to where I want it. but I'll have to plug the hole like that one or 
if I put a big hole in here, which is fine because the bridge will cover all that as long as I don't go near the bridge screws. Am I going to be able to get a hole from here to there? Well, from there to there and have enough on angle or is it hmm scary okay have a rethink do some more drawing right first thing I'm going to do is extend this hole here so that will give me more room for the spare wiring to sit in then I'm going to cut a hole in here um, away from the screw holes and then see if I can get this angle where I want it from here from inside this hole if not I'll drill it from this end I'll put it exactly in the center so maybe it doesn't look so unobtrusive it's a shame because I could have uh, doweled it and then put the strap button after doweling and gluing it and put the strap button there and you wouldn't notice the dowel in it uh, but the strap button needs to go there so that's it's just unfortunate but right well that one's going to be deeper to start with i've got to put a hole in there anyway even if i drill a hole through here to this end i'm gonna need a cavity here to just to get the wires in and to tinker with stuff and once it's all pushed in and screwed in this end i can fold the wires neatly into here to spare and then I'll just have to dowel this end. Righto, bit the bullet. Oops, drilled that out deeper. Drilled through there, which was great fun when you've already got a hole going the other way, it all explodes, but that's all right, it's gonna be under the bridge. And I couldn't get the angle I wanted through there. If Maybe if I had the tiniest drill no i couldn't get the angle so um i've gone through through there you can just about see um and i will just plug that end and no doubt i'll stick a strap button on it or something so uh, something will happen uh yeah so now i'm going to do a bit of a quick mock-up with the pickups and the switch and everything and see if everything actually works wiring wise so we'll be back in a tick okay well that seems to work um, with the output jack and the two pickups the wiring is all in there that's that would just be the earth which goes to the earth on the output jack and uh, there's the wires all nicely tucked in um, what it has shown me is that the let me show you actually the I need to make this hole a little bit bigger just so I can get the wires through with all my uh, instructions intact this hole here Oh, this hole here I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and what it's also shown me is my cable from the neck pickup is just a bit short because it used to go through there through there and then straight out that hole in fact all the pickup wires used to go through that hole into the control cavity so now it's actually going further but I've already when I messed about with them before um, oh come on sit straight I've already extended these uh, extended them I originally cut them when I stripped the guitar which was a stupid thing to do 
so I've soldered and extended these so what I'll do is I'll take this back and I'll just put longer wires on and solder and heat shrink them nicely and try to get them a bit slimmer um, so that's all good I'll chuck them back in now and then put the bridge on just to see how it looks sort of pretending like it's together I also I'll say that hole needs to be a bit bigger the one going through there I think I'm gonna just chop a little bit of wood out of this area so that the four wires that are now sitting at the bottom will sort of recess in rather than it's just ever so slightly pushing up the pickup because the wires must be just hitting that edge of the foam so anyway that I can do let me just quickly throw this back together very very loosely we can have a overall look at it I might even put my strap buttons on it put strap on and see how it feels stop sniggering at the back right I've done a quick uh, mock-up dry build put everything on it at the moment just to see if it works and it does I've not screwed that in but uh, you need a longer shot don't you there you go so we definitely need a better longer shot Anyway, it all sort of does what it should do. Um, this thing, I was half contemplating chopping this off and doing what I would normally uh, have it, having it like the old B2s that I've owned before, like the Steinberger L2, but the Honor B2s. Uh, but then I'd always have the issue of the strap button being too too far away. And the other thing is, it just just confirms to me that I just prefer short scale now, which is basically ends there. Got so used to it, but with this being like a one-off, um, one of taking the frets out, um, not something I'll be using all the time. Uh, probably be using it sat down mostly which uh, brings me to something else now the the Steinberger L2s and the Honors um, have a little flap here so that when you sit down the little flap comes forward and it and you can rest it on your leg and it's quite comfy So, I might get one of those, because I know I can get them to screw it straight on, which will also cover up my little, my little dodgy bit. But then again, I've got another dodgy bit I need to fill in. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now, strip it all, fill in my hole for the dowel. I'm going to fill all of the holes, all of the screw holes. I'm going to fill, let's get you back, let's speak to you. I'm going to fill every screw hole on it with um, sawdust and wood glue and let it go off overnight because these bits have been on and off a few times the holes are okay at the moment but they may well get baggy so I know it's going to work uh, yeah take it apart do my filling do lots more sanding I've not sanded the back of the neck yet and obviously one day we'll get round to taking these frets out and filling it in and sorting it all out. Just realised something. The tuners are further down than the strap button and this. <laughs> so 
that bit there was irrelevant but I might just keep it it's just a bit of something to look at just helps to I don't know yeah I think I'll probably keep it looks all right but yeah uh, so when it's stood up it will just stand straight on the these Whereas the original base, there was a lot more wood coming out and then the two strap buttons. So it stands. I'll turn you around. Yeah. Basically, pretty much stands on the tuners. <laughs> it does. But. Oh well, so be it. At least it will stop that getting all scratched up. And the other thing is I haven't got a... Uh, of all my loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of locking strap buttons, I haven't got a pair left because I've got them on all my guitars now. But I've got to... Or maybe I have got a pair. I didn't see that one. Uh, but I want, some, I want to put black ones on it. So I'll get another... Another pair of them, that would be another trip to see Steve. Right, let's turn you back round and I think we're going to knock this on the head for today's performance, but I'm uh, quite pleased with that. Also got a lot of stuff to clear up. Oh, camera's a bit off, off kilter. Uh, right, it's becoming traditional this, isn't it? Sitting on the, sitting on Rita before and after the video. Uh, that's it. I'm going to clear up and uh, I'm pleased with what I've got so far. Um, can't wait to get those frets out because it's going to look a bit lovely with some maple or something just in the fret slots. Um, I'm going for a blonde maple uh, in the slots in, rather than a dark wood to match the fretboard uh, because I'm not that talented and I need the fret marking still there to play with a fretless bass you uh play because you haven't got the frets it puts it the semitone out so you actually fret exactly on where a fret would be to get your note as opposed to just behind the fret uh anyway you don't need to know that Apart from the fact that I will put some light coloured bits of wood in the fret slots and then have it all, shave it all, shave it, sand it all flat and nice. So that I can see the frets where they used to be, so I can play in tune. Um, and I'll be using flat wound strings. This is a rosewood board. If it was an ebony board, I probably could have got away with round wound strings, but on a fretless bass I like the flat wound string sound anyway it's, it's it's the sound more of a of an acoustic upright bass or with a bit of chorus it's very 80s very um Mick Kahn Mark Kahn oh great I can't even remember his name now uh famous fretless bass player from the 80s who was in Gary Newman's band and many others. Mark Khan, Mick Khan. That's sad, I can't remember his name. Um, not with us anymore. God rest him in peace. Um, anyway, 80s. That's what I'm all about. That's enough from me. Thanks for sticking with me, if you're still watching. Um, thanks for your comments, they give me a giggle. Um, love and peace peas and loaf see you next time this was part four i think see you for part five unless i've got the numbers wrong cheers